Hello and welcome to Maths with Jay. So what we want to do here is to use the diagonalization of a 2 by 2 matrix to raise it to a power. So we're raising it to the power of 4 in this case. Now we've already seen how to diagonalize this matrix, so let's just remind ourselves of what we found. So the important thing here is that the matrix in the middle is a diagonal matrix. So let's just uh, put down space for the matrices. And we'll just put the diagonal one in first of all. So you'll remember that what we did was we found the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of the matrix A and the eigenvalues went into here and here, into our diagonal matrix. And then the matrix P contained the eigenvectors. So we had 1, 2, the eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue negative 1. And then the other eigenvector was 1, minus 1. And that was the eigenvector associated with 8. And then we found the inverse of this first matrix P and we found that it was a third and we're going to put that outside the, the, uh, the matrices there to make it easier to work with. So it was a third of this and there's a minus one there as well. Okay so that's our writing A in terms of our diagonal matrix. And then what we want to do, well let's just remind ourselves of the formula that we're going to be using. We want to raise a to a power, so we're just going to look at the general formula. So a to the power of n, when we've expressed a in this diagonal form, is p times d to the power of n multiplied by the inverse of p. So let's just write down what that gives us. So in this case we're looking at a to the power of 4, so that's going to be p times the matrix d to the power of 4 multiplied by the inverse of p. So that gives us a third and the first matrix stays as it was. And then we're going to raise this matrix to the power of 4, so let's just put that in there. And the matrix at the end stays the same as well. And then let's write down the, uh, the generalization for raising a diagonal matrix to a power. So we've got something like this. We've got, let's say, B and C is zero. So we've got A and D. And we're raising the matrix to the power of N, where N is a whole number, like one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And in this special case where we've got a diagonal matrix, it's really simple. All we have to do is to raise the a to the power of n and the d to the power of n. So this only works because we've got a diagonal matrix. So let's apply that in this case. So we're leaving the third there and the first matrix and we're raising the minus 1 to the power of 4 0 stay as they were, 8 is to the power of 4, so this is applying the rule we were just looking at, and the matrix at the end stays the same as well. So that's going to give us, again, matrix at the beginning stays the same, but negative 1 to the power of 4 is 1, zeros as they were, 8 to the power of 4 is 4096, and that matrix stays as it was. And now we're ready to do a bit of matrix multiplication. So I'm going to choose to multiply the first two matrices together first of all. So the uh, third stays as it was. So we're multiplying 1 by 1 and 1 by 0 which gives us 1, and then we've got 1 
times 0 and 1 times 4096. So that will be 4096. Then 2 times 1 and negative 1 times 0, so that will be 2. And finally, 2 times 0 and negative 1 times 4096, so that will give us negative 4096. So that's multiplying the first two matrices together. And then all we need to do is to multiply these two matrices together. So we've got 1 times 1 and 4096 times 2, so that will give us 8193. And then 1 times 1 and 4096 times negative 1, so that will be minus 4095. And then onto the second row, and we'll get 2 times 1 and 2 times negative 4096. So minus 8,190. And finally, 2 times 1. And then negative 4,096 times negative 1 will give us 4,098. And then you can see that it's made it much simpler to leave dividing by 3 till the end. So all we need to do is to divide each of those numbers by 3, they all are divisible by 3, and we're going to get 2,731 minus 1,365 minus 2,730 and 1,366. And a nice way to check that this is correct is to make sure that the elements of the main diagonal of a to the power of 4 are the same as the elements on the main diagonal of d to the power of 4. So checking that, the, the elements on the main diagonal here, well that's actually the trace, so let's write this down as the trace of d to the power of 4. So that's going to be elements on the main diagonal, plus 4096, so that's 4097. And the trace of the matrix we've just found, that's going to be 2731 plus 1366, and that is also 4097. So that doesn't prove that our answer is correct, but it makes it quite likely. Obviously, there are lots of matrices where, that you could write down that do have elements on the main diagonal that add up to 4097, but they obviously wouldn't be the correct answer. But in this case, hopefully we have got the correct answer. Another way of checking this one would be to actually multiply A by itself four times. Probably the fastest way of doing that would be to first of all multiply a by itself to get a squared and then multiply a squared by itself to get a to the power of 4. So this method works really well when you've got a very high power that you're raising the matrix to. In this case obviously it's not much more work to just multiply the matrix by itself.